happened that a lot of the states were being, a lot of people in the states were being held captive. That the news of the emancipation did not reach them. They, did, they heard nothing about the emancipation of slavery. And in Texas, this was one of the similar cases. During the Civil War going on, they held the people there and slavery still going on, everything else normal, the Civil War still going. And the uh, Major General Gordon Grander, Texas, I'm not going to even call the name of that town because I don't even know how to pronounce it. Yes. Yes, he rode into that place in Texas. And he brought the news, he brought the news that Im slavery was now emancipated. And it was on June 19, 1865. Two years, two and a half years actually, after the actual emancipation day. So the second, there was... They were deliberately withheld by the enslavers to maintain labor force on the plantation. And a third reason is that federal troops actually waited for the slave owners to reap the benefits of the last cotton harvest before going to Texas to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation. So there are these three reasons that have been floating around over the centuries of why the news took so long to and a half years. It's like someone who was walking from Canada going down to Texas and they had to take breaks. So the news took a long while before it reached. That's just my throwing there. But nevertheless, when the news came to Texas that they were now free, there were mixed emotions. Some people, they were angry. The slaves, they were excited that I'm now freed. And because of the news, it caused a little bit of chaos. Chaos, not, 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 not anything major. In that some of the slaves, they did not know what to do. Should I stay here and allow my slave owner to now become my employer and I'm an employee? Or should I go? For most of them, they came to Oklahoma. Because Oklahoma was considered a freed land. that You can come. So their biggest, their biggest mindset was to run from the plantation as far as you can go. So they ran from Texas and they came to Oklahoma. Is any of you here descendants of those people? Okay, just check in. But they came here and they ran as far as possible from the plantation to get the freedom that they really was desperate for. And June 10th, might have a list calling it, so pardon me. June theme became a memorable day. The day that they got the news that they were now emancipated. And you know what they did? For many of the slaves, they stripped themselves of the ragged clothes that they were wearing. They tossed them into the river and they were now dressing as people that were really free. So they wanted to dress their best. They put on their best. And they went out, I am no longer a slave. And the next major thing that they did, they started celebrating. They had barbecues, they had fishing, they had all this time where they would come together by the riverside, by the parks, and they would just celebrate their freedom. And today we are commemorating this occasion that the people of that day went through. When they got the news, it meant for them a time of Jubilee, a time of celebration, a time where I can now step out of the status that I was placed under and be now considered someone who have equal rights as my fellow counterparts. And they made the day an official day of celebration that the African Americans will now recall of the news. And I want to read the official poem, the official Juneteenth poem that is um, entitled, We Rose. I might not do a brilliant job as Joella can, but I'll try my best. It says, from Africa's, from Africa's heart, we rose. Already a people, our faces ebon, our bodies lean, we rose. Skills of art, life, beauty, and family, crushed by forces we knew nothing of, we rose. 
survive we must. We did. We rose. We rose to be you. We rose to be me. Above everything expected, we rose. To become the knowledge we never knew, we rose. Dream, we did. And this was written by Christina Kay in 1996 and has been adopted as the official poem for Juneteenth. I thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ash, for that presentation. Amen. It's time to give. Amen. I was offering time. Amen. Blessing time indeed. The Lord bless and the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And um, on the screen, you'll see all the ways and modes you can give. If you're joining us online, you can text your amount to 84321 or use the cash app. Uh, Hope International Ministries, the dollar sign, and Hope International Ministries. You can also give by sending your check. If you're writing a check right here, write it payable to Hope International Ministries. Pick up an envelope in front of you and drop it in our basket. Or if you're watching online, you can send it to 8086 South Yale Avenue, PMB 175, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Zip code is 74136. Amen. Or you can go to our website and also give over there. Uh, amen. God bless you. Join us as we give to the Lord cheerfully. Amen. Want to do um, the news of this church? We want to just take you to do a few African praise. And if you can join us, praise the Lord. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. What have we that we did not receive from you? Freely we received and freely we give. The word commands us to do so. We decree and declare by the power of the word that every seed that has been sown today will yield its increase in Jesus' name. The Lord bless the works of your hands. The Lord make way for you where there seems to be no way. The Lord bring you to a place called Beth, a well-watered garden. The Lord give you wisdom to get wealth in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless your business. The Lord bless your job. The Lord bless your household. Everything your hand finds doing, I declare blessed in Jesus' name. May all that you do, even in the Lord, be, bring you a blessing. The Lord keep you shining even in the days to come. You receive that, say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. You can have your seat. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand for the word. We want to welcome our head pastor, Reverend Dr. Trevor Grizzle, to bring us the word. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we do. Well, good afternoon. It's good to be here today for, for Father's Day. First of all, I want to thank you for the acknowledgement, Sister Latanya, and for, for the, to the church for the gift and for your graciousness to me as a pastor. I really and truly, as a father too, I really appreciate this church. There's nothing that excites me more than this place. To be among you, to be your leader, I get turned on just to think about that. Um, before I get into the word, and it's going to be a short word today because the time is far spent, uh, I want to say that um, we do have the seminar coming, this marriage family seminar coming on, on Saturday at 9 o'clock. I do want you to take this very seriously to know that it's, it's for you. Do come out, please. Uh, we're going to be having, of course, a light breakfast and uh, some refreshments. $15 per person. Please come. It is for you, and we're bringing the best to you. All the way from, I think it's, I forget whether it's Virginia or some, or oh, yeah, somewhere there. That, I mean, they go around so much, I forget exactly where they stay, you know. But they are, they are indeed uh, experts, specialists in the field of marriage and the family. They've got, they have grown children who really stand out in the nation for their brilliance uh, in academics, but also because of their own moral posture in the world or in this nation. We thank God for this uh, family, or this couple that's coming. Uh, the last thing I want to say, I think I did tell you that we are going to have uh, the Jamaican Sunday, the Jamaica Sunday, this coming Sunday, uh, to, for you to bring a special offering. Now, I, I had totally forgotten that we had, this was a conflict of, of uh, events, and so I, I forgot. So we're going to put this off till the first Sunday, unfortunately, of next month, I do ask and I do expect that you'll bring a special offering for Jamaica. We, I spoke with the bishop and uh, the previous bishop to him in Jamaica yesterday and Sister Michelle, and everything is set for us to come. But the, the uh, need is great, there's a great need we need money, and I, I know that we've asked you, and you're, 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 a, you're a giving church, and we believe that the need will be met in Jesus' name. We have gone to show that God is a good God, and God comes through and does 
his business in his way, in his time. And I'm believing that you're going to come through and help in this, in this project as well. All right, I want to get to the word. And by the way, here I have this lovely casing for my Bible case. And my niece gave this to me this morning. She told me, oh, Pastor, I couldn't bear to see you, your, all your stuff falling down of the Bible. And I got to give you something. To... <laughs> this is Priscilla. Thank you. She's a darling girl, isn't she? What a lovely person she is. Lovely lady. She's, she's lovely. I mean, she's my niece. And, um, well, you know what I mean by that. And today, I really want to speak to you out of my heart, you know, as a father. And I, I don't want to get into anything deep or, or long. I want to go to one scripture out of Luke chapter Speaking of John the Baptist, John the Baptist, here, beginning in verse 15, speaking of John the Baptist, well, let's begin in verse 14, he will be a joy and delight to you. These are the words to Elizabeth. Um, Sorry, Zechariah, yes, and Elizabeth. He'll be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine and, or other fermented drink, and he'll be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he's born. He'll, be, he'll bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And this is the verse that is really on my heart today. And he will go on before the Lord and in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents and other translations will say fathers. The word in the plural there could mean what is fathers and some translations take it as parents. Fathers, you may, have, you may have fathers in your translation. Turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. To make ready a people ready for the Lord. It goes back to um, Elijah, who was to, pre to perform this role in the Old Testament, to bring the people back to God. There was a, a, a situation of moral decline, social decay, just chaos in society where everything was out of place. There was total dysfunction everywhere. Elijah's message was to bring the people back together to the Lord. They were so in such this disarray, they turned their back on God. The children, the home, the family, there was a total breakdown everywhere. In society, there was a total breakdown everywhere. And Elijah, Elijah was sent to bring them back. Not with much success, of course, but that was his message. Turn back to the Lord, you know. Now we come to John the Baptist, New Testament time. He bridges the Old Testament and the New Testament. He's the bridge, one foot in the Old Testament, one in the New. But his role also is to bring the people back to God. To bring children back to their fathers and fathers to the children. The fathers first to the children and disobedient children back to their fathers. The important role of the father. This is what I see in the what one verse. The importance of father in the home, in the society, in the world. Because it all begins in the home. If the father is not in his place, if he's not doing his job, 
there is repercussion everywhere. There is this ripple effect into society. Father's role is the anchor of the family. The anchor of the family. If he loses his place, if he fumbles the ball, everyone loses in the end. It does not take a rocket scientist to say that there's something wrong with the family, with the society, with the communities in the Western world. Something wrong. There is something wrong. It does not take a brain surgeon to say there's something wrong with our world as it is right now, particularly in the Western world. Something is wrong. And it begins with the man, the father, who is not in his place. Anymore, titles are fluid. Gender is fluid. Fatherhood is fluid. Motherhood is fluid. Who is father? Who is mother? Who is, child? Who is daughter? Who is son? Anymore. There's a fluidity. Choose. You choose your own gender. Choose who you are. Choose who you, who you want to be. Who you are biologically doesn't really count anymore. But we're saying there's a reason why God has revealed himself to us as Father. There is a reason why there's male leadership throughout the world. We thank God for those women who've taken the reins. We don't berate them, but they're the exception. God is saying something that there are roles and functions that a man can do that a woman can't do as well. And if we try to switch those roles or to eliminate those roles, we have chaos in the home, we have chaos in our communities, we have chaos in the world. And Father must see his place as the glue, the anchor of the home, the anchor of society. Otherwise, everything falls apart. I was um, doing a marriage seminar with my wife in Louisiana, a place called Tyler Town. We'd go there every year, and this year it was time to do a, a seminar, a marriage seminar in Mississippi. What did I say? In Mississippi. Tyler Town, Mississippi. Please forgive me. Mississippi. <laughs> Louisiana is very close by to Mississippi. We had to go through Louisiana to get to Mississippi. Anyhow, what a wonderful seminar. God really blessed. But at the end of the seminar, a man came up to me, he was, he was in his uh, early 30s, I think, early 30s. He said, thank you for coming today, for sharing what you said is so needed. He said, I'm in my second marriage. It's about to fall apart. A divorce is likely to take place, a second divorce. He said, um... I did not know, I still don't know how to be a father or to be a husband in my home. Because my father was a drunkard. He was not, when he was present, he was, not, he was emotionally and psychologically absent from me. I learned nothing what it meant to be a man, what it meant to be a father, but I was told at a certain age, it's time to get married. So I got married had children, and a, a divorce came quickly. In my second marriage, yes, we've had children, but again, my marriage is falling apart. I know it's going to end in divorce. And of course, uh, the seminar did help for a while, but ultimately they, they, they separated. And they, 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 they married away. Well, not married at all, really. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm saying... Mother has a role in the home, definitely. 
But it is said the father's role is so much more important because he becomes, I use the word, the anchor man. The anchor man. If he, if he gets shifted out of that role, something doesn't go right in the family. It happens, and something happens to the children. The sense of discipline, obedience, following rules, growing up to respect people. And we see that happening all over this nation. Is that right? You go and interview some of those people who are shooting, those kids who are shooting up other kids and people who are shooting up people. What happened? In the home, something went wrong and you check and you see father was not in his place. He was not doing his job. He was absent. So I'm saying, fathers, those of you who are fathers, and those of you who are going to be fathers, take this divine role and the divine mandate seriously. God is depending upon you. Your children are depending upon you. Generations are depending upon you. Because what's happening here now in America began way back. It goes back some 50, 75 years. A drift with father has come out of his place. That sense of having the reins in hand. No longer does he have the reins in hand. And the drift. The ship, the, the ship of the home crashes. We're seeing that in our communities. As Christians, let that not happen in our families. Let's be, a, let's be godly men, godly fathers, righteous people who turn men back to God, but turn our families to God also. We need that in our homes, friends. Today we understand, we know, and we see that the man has been, what can I say, he has been diminished and he's been disrespected. The language used sometimes, you look at the TV sometimes and the way they're pushed aside and as if, you know, one of the phrases no, no longer used, but it used to be used. Are you, are, you a man, are you a man or a mouse? Squeak up. Squeak up. And the man is pushed aside as, but we're saying that's not what God says. Now, we know men shouldn't be macho, you know, like the John Wayne and the, the Sylvester Stallone guys, tough and you're rugged, rugged and rough. That's not what God calls us to be. But he calls us to be tough and tender. People with compassion and conviction. And their families in our church who are raising their children that way. God says this is the way you ought to go. Abraham will lead his children, all right? God is depending on you, husband, father, to lead your home and let your home be what God intended for marriage and the home to be. Fathers, take your children under your wing. Pray for them. Pray for them. Read the scriptures to them. Be involved in their lives, please. Yeah, take them places. Go to their games. Take them to Incredible Pizza and other places. Be there, wherever they want to go, be there with them. You're investing in their lives. If you have no interest in them, others will. And you'll, you'll at the end say, my son, my daughter, what, what's happened? You know, it doesn't mean you, you, you're going to be perf a perfect father, mother. But we're saying there are certain things we need to do. And do them consistently. Be the anchor in your home in your children's life, don't let them grow by somebody else's philosophy, by what they see on TV. Let God's word, let your presence, let your input be that which guides them. Amen? Thank you very much.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we heard that word from our senior pastor. Now that you have heard it, blessed are you if, when you, if you do them. So fathers, let's be the fathers God wants us to be. And God will raise generations, generations after you that would change the world. Amen. Amen. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness and for the word that you have given us today. That we would understand that we have a responsibility. We receive grace for this. Before we close, this prayer was on my heart. If you don't mind, join me praying. For the fathers who have been wrongly incarcerated here in America, uh, in some states, half of the prison population are black Americans. And um, we want to pray for them. And among those, many of them are serving sentences that were handed over for minor crimes and for long terms. Some of them are, were also wrongly incarcerated, injustice, black Americans. So if you don't mind, just let's lift a prayer for them. That the God of justice, this morning when we came to leadership prayer, uh, Pastor Maureen shared a scripture in Psalm 20, that the Lord will defend you. That God will defend them. Those who are still crying out to God. Just recently a man who had served 30 years, 30 years for something he did not do. He wasn't even close by. But they put him in jail for 30 good years and was released recently. And a lot of them in there, let us pray for those who are crying out. They have children, they have families. And therefore, a lot of single mothers in the African-American community because these fathers have been incarcerated. Let's pray for this right now, if you don't mind. Let's lift up prayer for this in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you this morning as a church, God. And as your people, God. We know that you're a good God and you're a merciful God. You are the God who defends your people. You are the God who defends those who have been wrongly, Father God, and unjustly treated. The God of justice. This morning, the voices crying out, Father God, in the prisons all across America, crying out for justice. The many who are in death rows and the many who, Father God, have been imprisoned for life for crimes they never committed, was not even close by God. But because of the color of their skin, God, they've been put in jail and incarcerated for life. Have mercy on them, God. Hear their cry. Send them angelic help. We understand that in scripture, God, you sent help to Peter, who was jailed, Father, unjustly. unjustly. You sent help to Paul and Silas, who were jailed unjustly. We pray for these also who are crying out. For many of them, when they come out, they say of their story that we trusted, we trusted God, and we believe that he will bring us out. So, Lord, let it be that they will see their freedom. They will experience their freedom, God, and be reunited to their families in the name of Jesus. Protect the man. Father God, even right now, among the black Americans, the African Americans, the colored of God, the fear when they come into contact with police, anything at all that has to do with police. And Lord God, it could just turn, Father God, deadly any moment. We pray in the name of Jesus that your protection will be upon us, oh God. We are part of this society. We are calling upon you. Protect the fathers and especially the black Americans in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them rise indeed. Like the poem says, let them rise. Let them rise, oh God, out of all the demeaning and father, all the other things, policies that are put in place, oh God, racial policies. We pray that you break the back of these policies, oh God, and make a way for your children. Let them arise and see good in the land, in the name of Jesus. For those 
those who are willing and obedient. Let them eat the good of the land. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that indeed, like Martin Luther said, freedom will ring in the name of Jesus for all this. Freedom indeed as we celebrate Juneteenth. Let there be a Juneteenth for these ones also that they will see freedom and true freedom. And apart from being freed from prison, may they be freed from every prison, spiritual prison, in the name of Jesus. May they experience the freedom that comes in Christ Jesus. We decree and declare this in Jesus' name. You agree with me, say amen. Thank you, thank you. God bless you all for coming. The Lord bless your food and water. The Lord bless everything you're going to do today. May God go with you. Join us during the week for whatever programs we have to do. Amen. The men have a cake at the back for celebration. So please join them as they cut their cake for Father's Day. God bless you all and we'll see you next week. Thank you.